Yo, what's up guys, Javin back with another video. I've been playing Fortnite since like day one. I've always been a mid-level player trying to keep up with the meta, trying to break ahead of the median and get to that pro level. Over the past few seasons, I was finally able to step up and improve a ton to catch up to those tier one pros, mechanically speaking. So I took a step back and tried to figure out the best things that helped get me to that point. And that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. By the way, if you're on higher ping than me, don't worry, I'll have tips for you as well. Before we hop into this video though, the sponsor of today's video is once again, Buff Gaming. If you don't know about Buff, Buff is an app that allows you to earn rewards like Steam cards, Xbox cards, and more, all for free. Simply download Buff and have the app running in the background while you play your favorite games, such as Fortnite, Valorant, Apex, and even Minecraft. Buff is a great addition to your grind because it adds extra incentive to perform your best so that you complete more challenges and earn more rewards. There's nothing more satisfying than seeing your buff points increase throughout a gaming session. Plus, it's a trusted app of Overwolf and basically takes zero computer power, so your gameplay won't even be affected. Start earning rewards for free while gaming by simply downloading Buff with the link down below. Now without further ado, let's hop into it. Tip number one you've heard a million times, but I'm going to try to help you gain new insight on it. Raiders Peace Control and Mechanics maps are a great way to improve, but you need to be doing it the right way. Recently I've noticed that so many people who are stuck mechanically just hop into these maps. They just load into them, play them, and they're like, okay, so this should help me improve. It's not that easy. If you actually want to see improvement in something, you got to test yourself. You got to push yourself. I only go into these maps when there's something new that I'm trying to learn. So if you don't know peace control very well, go into Raiders peace control maps and really push yourself to do it as fast as possible and as consistently as possible. If there's certain edits that you struggle with, practice those edits in those maps on repeat until you can get it down. It's not enough to just go into the maps and play it brainlessly and then call it good. You need to test yourself. A really good example of this is I went into Raiders Peace Control Tunnels, which is in his mechanics map. You're seeing it on screen right now. I went into these not with the idea of, oh, I wanna practice my peace control. I went into this saying, oh, I wanna get my building to a faster level. I wanna get my builds to be more flicky and my crosshair placement to be tighter. I didn't just go into this map and start building around. I went in with a purpose. I did that for about a week. And by the end of that week, my edits had increased a ton. My crosshair placement had increased a ton and I just felt like I was more confident overall with my building and peace control. I watched Mr. Savage a lot and he's always building so fast to the point where it's like hard to comprehend. So I went into the map and tried to build like Mr. Savage. I wanted to get my playstyle to merge a little bit more with his. There's maps for any mechanical thing that you need in the game, whether it be aim, whether it be peace control, building, whatever it is. If there's an area of your game that you know you're lacking in, search up a tutorial on it. I probably have one and get to work. That's step one on improving your mechanics. Now, speaking of aim, that leads us into step two. We're going to talk about aim trainers, but we're not talking about aim trainers for improving aim necessarily. This is mostly for keyboard and mouse players, but using aim trainers is the biggest thing that improved my game. And it's not because, oh, it made my aim better. It did help with that, but it's because it made my mouse control better. Getting good control of your mouse is maybe the most important thing mechanically as a keyboard and mouse player. I noticed that over the past season was my biggest season of improvement, and the biggest thing that I changed up this past season was running Kovacs daily, almost every day at least. Down in the description are my three Kovacs routines, my easy, medium, and advanced. If you're new to keyboard and mouse, start with the easy one. If not, start medium and then work your way up to the advanced one. I run the advanced one every single day. I don't even worry about the medium one anymore. Basically, I just hop into the map, try to go faster every single time that I get on, try to stay accurate, like not miss many targets. And over time, I've seen my aim improve a ton, my crosshair placement improve a ton, and just my overall mechanics improved like crazy because of this. By the way, I just updated the advanced playlist with some new drills. If you don't have Kovacs, use Raiders' new solo aim training map. This map is the closest thing to Kovacs that's been made yet, and it's really, really good for improving. Now, here's an important detail. In these maps, when you're doing the tracking courses, you know, there's a target flying across the sky. Try to keep your mouse as steady as possible while tracking. Try to get rid of that shake. The best way to do this is experiment with different ways of holding your arm. I'm telling you, once you find your comfort zone with where your arm should be placed while tracking, your tracking will get so much smoother. If you notice your arm getting all shaky, that means you're in a really uncomfortable position and you need to change it up. Another tip is on the courses that have targets that aren't moving, practice flicking between them as fast as you can. Don't start out by just flicking like crazy. 
Start slow, move your way up. The goal is to get to the point where you can do it as fast as possible, and the way you do that is by doing sharp movements between the different targets. Keep up the grind with these aim training courses, I promise if you're trying to go pro, this is what you need to be doing. The third insanely helpful thing, and I talk about this all the time, learning high ground retakes. Whether you think the high ground retake is going to be useful in game or not, it's still useful to learn them. I've learned so many high ground retakes throughout my days, and I still learn all the high ground retakes that I see that I don't already know how to do. The reason I do this is because it helps your building overall. 90% of the retakes that I learn and make videos on, I don't use very often. But the reason you learn them is because it gives you more flexibility in your builds. The more retakes you learn, the more combos you can do. The more combos you can do, the less predictable of a player you are. It also helps in in-game situations when you have like a weird situation where you need to do some kind of weird jump to get to zone or something like that. Like you know how to do it because you know so many retakes and you're so comfortable with building in the game. So all in all, high ground retakes was one of the biggest things to help me get mechanical. Tip number four is just practicing edit coursing in creative. Maybe even go on other servers and practice edit coursing on different servers on laggier ping. The more you do this and the more consistent you get with it, especially on higher ping, the more consistent you're going to be with it in game. A season or two ago, I could run an edit course that was like, oh, five edits in a row. Now I can edit course just like forever, switch directions, change layers, no problem. This is so crucial, especially in end games in Fortnite, because you need to be able to hit every single edit in an end game. You know what's funny? On West servers this past week, I missed Qual because I missed one single edit in my last game. Missing that one edit caused me to die to storm. And if I would have gotten to the safe zone, I probably would have qualified. I just needed to outlast two more people and there were a ton of people in the storm. If you wanna see those highlights, they're on my second YouTube channel, Vibin Javin. But practice doing edit courses like you've been seeing on screen here. It'll help you out, I promise. Also just throw in random free builds as well. Start throwing in retakes to your free build sessions and you'll see a lot of improvements. Tip number five is practice 1v1s. You've heard me say it before, 1v1s are the best way to transfer your skill from creative to arena and to tournaments. The better the players that you 1v1 practice against, the better your fighting is gonna get. If you practice against kids that you can beat 10-0 every single time, it might help you practice your mechanics a little bit, but it's not gonna help you become a better fighter. You can practice against friends that are cracked at the game. You can practice against people in scrim discords. You can practice against people on rematch. There's a lot of places you can find really good players to practice against, but 1v1s are key to getting better at the game. That's why you see these pros not really run in arena because they're already too good for the arena players. Doing 1v1s against pros is like the fastest way they're going to be able to get better. That's why they do it. It's also fun because it's just never ending fighting. So those are the five biggest things that help me get more mechanical at the game. Now I promised I'd give you guys some high ping tips as well. The only time you ever see me playing on high ping is when I'm playing cash cups on other servers but I usually do pretty well in the West Cash Cups where I have 70 ping. The biggest things that I can recommend to you guys to get better at playing on high ping is if you're practicing in creative and your ping is way lower in creative than it is in arena and tournaments, then what I recommend doing is switching servers to a server where you have higher ping. That way, while you're practicing your mechanics, you can get used to your high ping as well. I mean, this only really works if you have another server nearby you that gets you somewhat close. Like if you switch servers and you're like 100 ping higher, then it's probably not gonna be worth playing on a different server. But that's one tip. Another tip is on high ping, you can still edit fast. You just need to get really sharp movements down and get the timing of the higher ping down. What I mean by sharp movements is getting really consistent crosshair placement. This doesn't just help on zero ping for editing fast. If you can get to the point where you're spending the least amount of time possible in every single edit, then you'll get a lot faster editing. Now, one reason I do pretty good on West servers when I'm playing the cash cups is because I avoid mid game fights. Fighting on higher ping, especially in cash cups, is going to be extra hard. Whenever I get into mid game fights, I usually try to avoid them, but when I do get into them, I play a lot more defensive than I would on zero ping. What I mean by this is I spend my time focusing and analyzing the opponent's attacks and placing builds where I think they are going. That way I'm staying ahead of them and I can defend against their plays. I do this and I'm patient with it until I have a moment to strike. I go for side jumps and like sneaky attacks, but for the most part, I'm trying to block my angles from them because I don't want to get peace controlled. You definitely can get really good on high ping. There's a lot of really good high ping players out there. So just stick with it and don't get demotivated. Try to avoid blaming your ping. I know it's hard, but do your best. I hope this video helps you guys out. If it did, be sure to hit that like button sub if you're new. Use code JavinTV and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.